So one thing you could do is, let's have one for every century. I think it's a great thing. Okay. We overlook some centuries. But I only have 90 seconds, so we'll skip a few centuries. So we go to the early church. I love the martyrdom of Polycarp. It's a second century text. It gives us fresh insight into what was happening in the church at that time. It helps us think about what it means to be a Christian in a culture that is hostile to Christianity. Martyrdom of Polycarp, first stop. Then we'll skip a bit to the 400s. No, we'll stop and we'll, yeah, we'll go to the 400s. We'll pick up Augustine's Confessions and Leo's Tome. But Leo's Tome, you know, Tome is a big book. It's actually only a seven page letter, so we'll throw that in. Aquinas, so the Summa Theologica. I've got a beautiful copy of Latin on one side, on the English on the other, but you can, you can find all kinds of versions. We come to the Reformation. I'm a big fan of the three treatises, Luther's three treatises. Uh, you have to have Calvin's Institutes. It's that mature thought of the Reformation. It's been going for a couple decades. Calvin gives it to us. We can skip on to Edwards. And I always tell people, you know, religious fractions, freedom of the will, original sin. You're gonna, it's like the deep end. Start with the sermons. And I'll tell you, one of my favorite Edwards sermons is a sermon called the most high, a prayer hearing God. And it is a beautiful sermon on the doctrine of God in prayer. Uh, and then let's go to Charles Hodge, a good systematic theology, and let's go right up to holiness of God. We skipped a few centuries, but it's That's enough to get started.